In this video, we're going to go through a couple concept questions relating to ma uh, magnetic field. I'm mean, showing my webcam so I can really walk you through the right hand rule if you need it. So first though, answer this question if you can. So the correct answer here is B. So this is a wire, B of the wire, and it's hard for me to write in this orientation, so sorry about my sloppy writing. The magnetic field of a wire depends upon how much current is flowing through it, and then how far away from the wire we're trying to find the magnetic field. So D in the denominator simply means the distance from the wire. Now in terms of direction, this is why I wanted my webcam on, is to show you with the direction, the right hand rule. We know that the magnetic field circles current carrying wires. So if you take your thumb of your right hand, in this particular case, our current is flowing towards the top of the screen. So if I put my thumb towards the top of the screen and I imagine my fingertips as arrows, if I have my fingertips to the left of my thumb, my fingertips are pointing towards me. So what that means is that the magnetic field points out of the screen towards me, so out on this side, if I hold, still keeping my thumb up, but hold my fingers to the right of the wire, which of course, I don't know how easy it is to transpose the view in your head here, but from my perspective, when I'm looking over at my hand, I see my thumb pointing upwards, like it's to the top of the screen, and my fingertips are now pointing away from me towards my computer. So that means the magnetic field over here is pointing into the screen. So on the left, the magnetic field is pointing towards me, and on the right, it's pointing away from me. So out of the screen on the left side, into the screen on the right side. So the magnetic field is circling this wire, the direction exactly on this side is out towards us. The direction on this side is exactly in towards the screen. The strength of the field, of course, varies depending upon the distance from the wire. So the closer to the wire, the stronger the field will be. The direction on either side of the wire is just opposite of each other. Let's look at one other question. So what do you think about this one? So B is the correct answer. Now in terms of calculating the strength of the field, in either case, we would have to look at B due to each semicircle individually. We, knew, we know B of a loop, I have my test notes next to me here, Oh dear, sorry, my arm's pressing buttons. Each semicircle is half of a loop, and we're also at the center of the loop, so z would be equal to zero, which means we would have half of the mu naught i over 2r. That would determine the strength of the magnetic field of each semicircle. It would depend upon how much current is flowing through the wire and the radius of that loop. 
So the difference between part A and part B, both of them have this outer bigger semicircle with the right hand rule. Let's put our thumb in the direction of that current. So as I look at my screen, that arrow points to the right. So I'm putting my thumb pointing to my right, pointing in the direction of this current. My fingertips, if I hold them, just looking at them with my face here, if I hold my fingertips above my thumb, they point towards me, meaning the magnetic field above my thumb, above that wire is coming out of the screen. Kind of weird contortions, but if I could get my fingers underneath my thumb, all the way down there, they would point into the screen away from me. So the magnetic field around this top semicircle is looping around this way. Out on top, wraps all the way around and goes back in on the bottom. Since the point I care about at point A is below that wire, the outer loop creates a magnetic field in at that location. And that's true in the case of B as well because they have the same loop. The radius of that loop is the same. The current flowing through that loop is in the same direction. Now the horizontal wires, they are creating magnetic fields as well. If I put my thumb in the direction of this arrow, so in A, that bottom arrow, that arrow is pointing to my left. So as I look at my screen, I see an arrow pointing to my left. So if I put my thumb pointing to the left, my fingertips above my thumb are pointing away from me. What that means is that the magnetic field due to this little wire is in above the wire. If I rotate my wrist all the way around and keep my thumb pointing to the left, my fingers below my thumb are now pointing out at me. And so the magnetic field is pointing out below that wire. So the field is looping the wire. Mm, try to draw that this way. So out on the bottom, in on top. It's circling that way. So that wire is creating a magnetic field, but its magnetic field does not pass through point A. So we don't actually need to account for that when we're comparing A and B. What we do need to count for is the inner loop. The inner loop will be creating a magnetic field at point A and in point B. In point A, I see on my screen that that arrow points to my left. So I'm pointing my thumb of my right hand. So my right hand thumb in front of my face here is pointing to the left to match that arrow. So above my thumb, my fingertips are pointing away from me. Below my thumb, my fingertips would be pointing towards me. So what that means is into the screen above the wire and out of the screen below the wire. Point A is below the wire, and so that means at point A, the magnetic field is coming out of the screen. So if we were to calculate the total magnetic field at A, we would need to vectorally add some magnetic field that's pointing into the screen and some that is pointing out. They're in opposite directions. So some of them will cancel out. We'll get a magnitude that is smaller than either one. In part B, we still have down here magnetic field pointing to the left, meaning above the wire, since my fingertips, as I point my thumb to my left, my fingertips are pointing in to the screen above my thumb and out of the screen below my thumb. 
So in on this side, out on this side. Point B is above the wire. So at point B, the inner loop will have a magnetic field that points in as well. When we add these two magnetic fields together, the field due to the outer loop plus the field due to the inner loop, because they're in the same direction, we'll get a larger vector that points into the screen. So this is going back to addition of vectors in general. Vectors depend upon the coordinate system. So with part B, option B, or point B there, since both loops contribute to the magnetic field in the same direction, we get a larger magnetic field overall. So hopefully it's kind of, I imagine it's kind of hard to look at the video and imagine backwards. So your right hand rule is in your perspective. So make sure your thumb is pointing in the direction of the current you are looking at and your fingers will represent the direction that field, that field loops around the wire you're talking about. 